Let's, uh, let's be in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that you would surround us each and every day with the power of your Holy Spirit, that we truly might walk by your side. In the name of our Savior, amen. Once upon a time, there was a man who went to work, and uh, they had a special day on work simplification, you know, how to do things uh, as quickly and, and efficiently as possible. Uh, and asked people to come back and report on uh, what they had improved. And uh, uh, well, the man came back and uh, said, uh, well, I, I, uh, I worked on my, uh, my wife's cooking of breakfast. Well, that brought the room quiet. And they said, how did you do? And he said, well, I did really well. Uh, she was uh, cooking breakfast in 20 minutes. And now I'm cooking it in 17. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa likes that one. <laughs> There's another story about a, uh, about a shop uh, uh, where they were selling uh, suits and, and men's clothing. Uh, and uh, one of the guys came to work with a bandaged arm. And the, the manager said, well, what happened to your arm? And he said, well, remember that double-breasted suit we had that was both pink and blue? And the, and the store manager said, oh, yes, where is it? And he said, I sold it. The, the store manager said, I thought that would never get sold. And he said, well, I sold it. And the manager said, but what about your arm? And he said, oh, that's where the seeing-eye dog bit me right after I made the sale. <laughs> Today's, uh, uh, today's passage uh, might seem long and wandering. It might not immediately uh, see how it all ties together, but it does. The first part uh, is about, about justice. And people come to Jesus, uh, and, uh, and they ask if when uh, uh, some, some Galileans, some people from the north, were killed uh, by, by Pilate while they were doing the sacrifice in Jerusalem, whether, uh, whether it was their sin or somebody else's that caused it. Uh, and, uh, and then Jesus also brings up another group, those also in Jerusalem where a tower had fallen on them. And so you have an example of human sin and you have an example of natural calamity. And the question is, was it their sin that caused this to happen? And, you know, this is, this is a, a, a question that's a, as old as the Bible and uh, still haunts us today. Uh, some people call it theodicy. Why do good things happen to, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Right? That's the question. And uh, I saw something once that said most young people leave the church because they can't understand bad things happening to themselves and those around them. And uh, I think it is. It's a, it's a haunting question for us. And Jesus' answer is uh, that, that um, the bad things just happen, that there is a randomness to life. Now, we don't really like that answer. You know, we, we wish that, that if anything bad happens to it, that we would have had some sort of cause for it. But in fact, bad things do happen all the time. And, and they're not always based on what we are able to to do, what uh, our own choices. Our own choices do not determine whether good or bad is going to happen to us. But then he goes on to say, but if you keep sinning, then you're going to pay for it. And that's true too. Those two things are true at the same time. Yes, bad time, things happen some of the time, not always related to us, but when we, are, when we behave in sinful ways, then almost always that sin will come back on us in this life, and if not this life, the next. That's what Jesus is saying. That in fact, we do, we do pay for our sins, but our sins don't explain all the bad things that happen. Later on, the disciples will ask about a person being blind. Is it his sin or the sin of his parents that make him be born blind? And Jesus said, no, it's not either. And, uh, and, so, and so the disciples have trouble letting go of this. And I think we sometimes have trouble letting go of it, too. Uh, there was, a, in the Rialto Church, 
there was a man there who was uh, um, a, a good-looking uh, uh, young black man who had been a school teacher and had started a, a church and a band, actually the band teacher, one of the, one of the high schools in town. And, um, uh, and so he started his church and he came to the ministerial group and it was going so well, he let go of his teaching and uh, things were, were going well at first and then they started to dwindle off. And here was his problem. He was very intent on preaching what we call a prosperity gospel, which means if we're good, we'll get blessed. And if we're not good, we won't be blessed, right? This was his message, and, and I heard him preach, very eloquent preacher, but very much intent on this message of prosperity, that, that all we have to do is be good. We have, a, we have a Star Wars going on up here, too. That's good prosperity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You don't want to be on the dark side. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and, and so we, we, have, we have prosperity gospel throughout, and uh, and... And, and the fact is, it just is not true. And we wish it were. We wish all we'd have to do is go to church and the blessings would just rain down on us. We wish if we just, you know, sent a little money in to some of the TV preachers, that somehow the, we would be able to, to exchange that for, for, for blessings. But it doesn't work that way. And his church started to go downhill. And the people in his church said, you know, if we're really doing God's will in starting this church, the church would prosper. And because the church is not prospering, it shows that, that, that uh, our pastor has done something sinful. And the church went down to zero. And he was destroyed. His faith was severely challenged. Now, fortunately, they hadn't found another band teacher yet. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so he was able to get his old job back. Uh, and he was a wonderful band teacher and uh, inspiration to, to his kids. You know, who knows? I think probably that was his true calling of God was to stick and work with the kids. But he himself struggled deeply because of his failure. Because he thought it meant that he had done something wrong and he didn't know what it was. He came to us and said, what am I doing wrong? Well, sometimes things struggle. Sometimes uh, our success does not, does not mirror our faith. And so that's what Jesus is saying. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes, sometimes bad things happen. And sometimes we bring it on ourselves, and that's true too. Yeah. And so then he goes on to tell them this story about a fig tree. Uh, and he says that uh, the fig tree was planted, the fig tree lived for three years, the owner of the, uh, the orchard walked out uh, and said, the fig tree hasn't given it any figs. Cut it down, it's wasting our soil. And the gardener said, let's give it another year. Let me dig around the roots and put some fertilizer down and tend to it. And then we'll see how the tree does. And it's a message about God's love. You see, in spite of the fact that bad things happen, whether just randomly or by our own making, God is there and God surrounds us with mercy. Uh, and so we can look at everything and go, oh my goodness, it's all falling apart. Or we can look at everything and say, look at how God has sustained us through all of this. That God's mercy is there. When, uh, uh, when I was a kid, my grandfather, uh, uh, Van Horn, uh, Grandpa Otto, had a... Um, he didn't become Grandpa Otto until I was an adult before he was Grandpa Van Horn. Uh, and he had a, an, an orchard where he grew fruit trees and nut trees uh, in Paso Robles. And one time I was there with my cousin Dennis. He was a year older than me. Uh, and Grandpa had us come out and plant a plum tree with him. So we planted this plum, plum tree. And he said, now this is your plum tree. And so uh, um, you, you will get all the plums that come off it. And so we were very impressed because we liked plums. And here was our tree. And, and I showed up uh, um, Thanksgiving uh, after, after the har or, or before the harvest, just before the harvest. 
And I looked, and my plum tree had no, no more than two or three plums on it, and all the other plum trees had plenty of plums. And I said, what, did Dennis take all the plums? And Grandpa said, no, no, this is all the plums that we got. And I said, what happened? How come your plum trees are doing so well, and Dennis and my, our plum trees, are doing, are doing so poorly? And, uh, uh, and Grandpa said, well, you guys didn't prune your plum tree. And so it's not giving many plums. And I said, what's pruning? And he showed me, he talked about pruning. I said, but I'm not here at that time of year. Dennis was. He goes, yes, I told Dennis to prune the plum tree, and he wouldn't do it. And I said, but how come I end up not getting plums because Dennis wouldn't prune the plum tree? And he said, well, you weren't here, but you could have made sure it was getting pruned. And I said, you know, Grandpa, I'm going to give you back that plum tree. <laughs> and I'm just going to take your plums. <laughs> it has to be tended to. It has to be cared to. And if we don't care for it, then we don't get the plums. We are called on to be ones who care, who, ones who, who help others. We have the mercy of God. God is like that, like that, like that, that gardener. Uh, who says, uh, let's give it another year. Now, actually, fig trees usually fruit by three years, but sometimes no, sometimes it takes four. And the gardener knew that, knew there was still hope, that the, 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 the fig tree could still give figs. And that's us too. Maybe we haven't given it enough figs till now in our lives. But there's still a chance to give figs. We still are called on to do our best and to give the fruit of of God's love and God's good works. Uh, LaGuardia, uh, you know, not only an airport, but, uh, but, the, but the mayor through uh, the Depression and through World War II of New York, uh, the mayor, of, that's, that's how come the airport is named, it's for, it's for, it's for Mayor LaGuardia. Uh, and one thing he liked to do was take over the night court some of the time. So I, I guess he was mayor, and he had been a lawyer and a judge, so he said he wanted to take it over, and the night court guy got, a, got vacation, and he got to go in and sit through night court and, uh, and meet. And he was, he was there at night court. The Depression was over. Uh, New York was doing well, but some of the people were still suffering in the, in the poverty uh, that was left over from the Depression. Uh, and one of them was this little elderly woman who came forward. Uh, she had stolen a loaf of bread because her grandchildren lived with her and they had no food and she didn't know what to do. The store owner brought her to court and, and demanded that she be thrown into jail so she would be an example of anybody else that they couldn't steal from his store without going to jail. And... And, and uh, 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 LaGuardia said, what if we just have her pay double for the bread? He said, no, I want her to go to jail. And so LaGuardia said, okay, I sentence you to either going to jail or paying $10 to the court. And uh, the woman said, but I don't have $10. And LaGuardia, LaGuardia said, okay. And he pulled into his own pocket and pulled out $10 and said, I'm paying the $10 for you. And not only that, everyone in this courtroom will pay 50 cents for living in a town where poor women have to steal bread for their grandchildren. And everybody pulled out 50 cents, and it added up to $47.50, which was a lot of money back then. And he gave it to the little lady and said, now go buy bread for your children. See, we're called on to be people of mercy. Why? Because God has mercy for us. You know, we, we are the tree that, that might not have been producing in the past, but we can produce. Just because we haven't done all the good that we should do doesn't mean that God can't work with us and through us to bring blessings over and over and over again. We're called on to reach out with concern for those in need, in all kinds of need and to give our lives to the service of others. That's what we're called on by Jesus Christ who gave his life for us on a cross. That we might, in some small way, be a slight reflection of that love and that mercy. 
And I'd like to close with a story. It comes from uh, uh, one of my friends that I get together with. Uh, we just had our, uh, our, our gathering of, of pastors. Uh, we, uh, we get together uh, four times a year when we can, sometimes three times, to look at sermons ahead and to discuss the Bible passages. And one of those guys is Steve Petit Marshall, uh, who uh, um, is, uh, one, is a pastor, a longtime friend of mine, uh, actually uh, one of my attendants at the wedding. And uh, he told a story about when he was going to Boston University. That was where he went. He had the summer uh, back there and uh, wasn't working at a church. So he went and, and gave his time at a place called, uh, in, in Boston, the Home for Little Wanderers. It, it was an orphanage. And it had been turned into a place for therapy for abused children. Uh, and so he was there to... To, to work with the kids, to just uh, simply, you know, love them and spend time with them. And he grew especially close to one of the little girls that was there. Just, uh, she just took to him and loved him. And uh, things were, just went so well for this, this young girl. And at the end of the summer when he was going back to school, uh, he, he, had to, uh, he said he had to, you know, could no longer you know, give his time. Uh, and the little girl brought a teddy bear to him. And uh, uh, said, will you, will you please, this is my favorite teddy bear, will you take it? And he had just read something the, the, the day before that said that abused children, it's really important for them to be able to give gifts. And so uh, he remembered that, and, and so he would have normally, he said he would have normally said, no, no, you get your favorite teddy bear, you keep it. He would have normally said that, but instead, he just said, thank you, thank you so much. And she gave him this teddy bear. And he had no idea of the significance of it. It was later when he was talking with some of the people that were still working there uh, at this home for little wanderers that the girl had had night terrors and couldn't sleep unless she had that teddy bear with her. But the day she gave it to Steve was the day that she was freed from her night terrors and was able to sleep through the night. We are called on to do our best. And sometimes we have no idea what to do. Sometimes we stumble along and think that we're doing nothing when in fact God is using us to bring new life to those in need. May we be open to the moving of God that we truly might be ones who share the love, mercy, and Holy Spirit that only, only God can offer. In that name we pray. Amen.